Hello everybody and welcome to another Volson guide and this time I want to show you a funny build which is all about projectiles. You launch tons and tons of different kinds of projectiles and it's really really satisfying to watch and play and it's also quite strong. As you can see I'm level 72 and I'm clearing a 118 expedition that's the highest I currently can go because of my time and it's super easy. This is the boss and the boss melts down in under 10 seconds. It's really satisfying to play. So if you're interested then watch this. Let's talk about the attributes first. It's super easy because I spend mostly everything into toughness around 90% because I want to stay alive. If you don't feel like uh, you need a survivability, you can um, spread it on to ferocity and agility if you want, or if you want to go for ailments, then go for wisdom. Um, but for me personally, in the higher levels, I would suggest putting the majority into toughness. Okay, boys, that's it for the attributes. Let's talk about the active skills and there are some choices we can make but let's start with the main damaging skills and these are two different projectile skills, okay? First and foremost we need Havoc Orb because that's our main source of damage. And I skilled it like so, it's pretty straightforward. We have a bigger radius, then we have 15% more damage. This one is cool because the orbs will split up in little clusters, you can see it here. As soon as the big uh, orbs land or the big balls land, they split up in smaller ones, so we cover a lot of ground here. And those two nodes basically just give us two extra projectiles, because as you can see we have two balls as standard. And when we use that, I need some more rage, then we have four balls. Okay, it's cool. I wish I would have four balls. Um, okay, that was just a joke. The second damaging skill and the second projectile skill is um, Arctic Spear. But it's not Arctic in our case, it's Rend, because this build um, is based on material damage, so I selected Rend. And it's pretty straightforward, we have 15% more damage. Um, we have a little delay when we activate this skill, but we have um, double the damage. And this one is responsible for the Arctic Spare to have this little spares going on. So if you launch this, look, you can cover the whole screen with projectiles. I really like it. It's more fun than serious damage, but still. Okay. Now, all the rest of our skills are only there to buff our main damage skills. Okay, we don't use them to deal active damage. They're just there for buffing. Sounds strange, but that's how it is. If you take this um, Bulwark of Dawn, or what is it called, and you can see inside Bulwark of Dawn's area of effect, your attacks deal additional damage as sacred. And you can see that if you press 4, if you have Rage. Now, I have two buffs. This is my attack buff, and this is my resistance bonus I get because that's um, what it comes with if you activate this little node here you get a little bit of resistance but that's not the point the point is that this actually gives us bonus damage I can demonstrate that look at this we have the average damage of this skill is 3851 now I will spam it and then I need to wait um, until my less silver is back in place then because I have willpower and I can show it to you. 3851, now I press uh, this button, I'm too stupid, and now look, 4428. And that's not the only skill or active uh, skill which can give a bonus for damage. I have here a little list, um, you will see it in a second, there you go. These are all the active skills I found you can use in order to buff your damage and they come in different shapes and sizes as you can see we have dusk shroud which uses rage um, i'm not a bit of not a big fan of that because we need the rage um, to deal the damage but still it's an option to consider because um, it gives us 20 percent 
bonus damage and it has this nice cleanse and CC effect. So we can get rid of all the negative effects. And if we are stuck and hindered because we are frozen or whatever, with this you can break free. So this is a um, this is worth considering if you feel you need kind of a crowd control thing. But all the others they use willpower. And there are some choices to make, okay? You can see Winter's Grasp only gives us 10% bonus damage. But it's better than nothing. Then we have uh, the Bulwark, which gives us 15%. That's nice. But all the others here, they give us 20%, okay? So I can show it to you what I mean. Now, if I will spend all of my rage, I press all the buffs now at once and as you can see I have four buffs and each buff is giving me bonus damage. So if you go back to the list real quick, if I would use spells which give me 20% and I can use four of them, this means 80% additional damage. 80%! That's pretty substantial. Um, and of course the skills deal a little bit of damage themselves. Anyways. So we have plenty of choice here. Consuming Ember um, has a buff duration of 10 seconds. It has a cooldown if you use a specific node, but since you can cast that skill instant, you're not really without buff at any time. Um, Thunderstrike is a better example. It consumes a little bit less um, willpower and it has the longest damage buff duration of 20 seconds. Okay, that's pretty substantial. It has also the same cooldown. And this is the damage the skills do themselves. So as you can see, this is the list I've compiled. And now it's for you to decide with um, how many and which skills you want to go. Okay, you can go with Bulwark because it gives you a good damage buff and it also gives you a little bit of resistance. It has also a little bit of self damage if you configure it this way. Um, I can show it to you. This is giving me my resistance, but you can configure it in any other way. The main thing is that you use this node, which gives us the damage bonus. For consuming Ember, it's the same. You need this little fellow here. It gives us the bonus damage. I've also experimented with um, duplicating the skill. So if I have, let's say, just remove that, two consuming embers, what you need to do then is, because they share the same cooldown, you press one, then you wait three seconds, and then you can press the other one, and you can see I have two different damage buffs because they have different um, elements. This one gives me fire, and this one gives me toxic, but both 20%, which add up to 40 you can even go for three consuming embers and have then 60%. But since they share the same cooldown, you need to press them after another, you know? That's what you need to do. Same applies for Thunderstrike. It has the longest buff duration of 20 seconds. So what you could do is you could um, duplicate it, what I did as well. So you have two different th Thunderstrikes. Show it to you. You press one. You press the other one and there you go. This is the rent coming from this one. And this is the frost 20% coming from this one. Okay, so it's up to you how you wanna, let's say use the skills which you prefer the most or what matches your play style. Since I'm very lazy and I want to press only one macro button, I'll select skills which don't share the same cooldown. So I can just um, press one stupid button, okay? Yeah, that's what I did. So you can go maybe also for Annihilation if you want um, or whatsoever. Cool. So this is that. So what we want to achieve is have, let's say, 70 to 80% bonus damage and then finish them with Havoc Orb and the rest dies with Thunderstrike. So let's have a look at the passives and there we have no big deals. It's always the same stuff we take. Um, of course, the 30% crit from the soldier, which boosts our critical chance. That's pretty obvious. And then who guessed it? The Kabbalist and Immortal Offering. It's in any build because it's still super strong and I like it. And that's why it's uh, present as well. We take Grievous Afflictions here. 
And then we of course take the king of damage mitigation passive, which is the Time Weaver and Dire Juncture. It's just super, super cool what this skill can give us um, as an option for damage mitigation. So these, these are the obvious choices which are in almost every build, okay? Now we need to boost our projectiles and this can be done here with the Exorcist and the Blessed Silver. So for every little um, point we have, we deal 10% more projectile damage. And since we have millions of projectiles, that's exactly what we want to have. Then we have this little material damage buff when we kill a champ or a boss. And 50% more material damage is exactly what we want because we deal material damage, okay? And we extend that by 120 seconds before it gets resetted. So this is straightforward. And that's the reason why I'm not a big fan of using Dust Crowd in this combination because we need the Rage in order to stay over 750 as long as we can in order to deal double the damage. Good. So down here we have another projectile damage boost which is uh, the Ranger Tree. So we launch an additional projectile and there we have the Warlock and a little bit of more maximum willpower and Rage. That's also nice to have. And the Plague Bringer, of course, is for the um, green globes. This is also a, let's say, passive, which is in almost every build because it's just plus 30% damage, okay? I mean, there are other choices. We also can go for the Assassin, um, which is um, even more damage, crit damage. Um, we can go for this little thing if we need to, let's say, manage our survivability. If we go in higher rifts, we can um, go uh, this path to have more damage mitigation. I mean, there are plenty of choices we can make in order to um, feel a little bit free of what we want to do. The main thing is select nodes which um, boosts all the projectile stuff or if possible material damage. Um, this is what we are aiming for. Okay. Good, then let's talk about the items. For the items, it's really straightforward. We are looking for material damage, um, anything which gives us more crit, cooldown, the usual stuff, okay? And I go for full bruiser. I have bruiser boots and bruiser gloves and bruiser shoulders. There's only one exception. I took this heavy plate because um, it has 10% material damage and we want material damage as much as we can. Um, as far as the rings are concerned, I only use steel rings for the white stat because they have critical damage. This ring here in particular has 10% material damage, which is of course very nice. Rage generation on hit is also cool. It helps us to stay below the 750 threshold. And my other ring also has material damage, which is pretty nice. The rest of the stats are a bit dull and all of my bruiser items are not very good. They don't have the best stats, but my chest has 7% material damage and transfer uh, transfer time speed between willpower and rage is also very good. Um, my catalyst has critical damage, which is cool, but it's also not the greatest. Um, talking about catalysts, if you have this one as a unique item, this also helps, but it's not needed for this build, okay? It's not required. My weapon is a, a dagger and it's pretty bad. I only have um, two gem socket slots. I did not roll it to three because it was just too expensive, but now I have a little bit of gold, so I should re-roll it. And I put uh, the rent stones or the rent gems in the dagger and you can see damage added to attacks because we want to buff the Havoc Orb, which is considered an attack. You also could go for um, damage, rent damage added for spells, then you would um, push this one, but I wouldn't recommend it, okay? I mean, you can totally revolve this build around um, uh, this skill only. There are some nice builds out there, but uh, I personally prefer the Havoc Orb, okay? So yeah, that's the dagger. Nothing special going on here. There's not even a material damage, only attack critical chance score. So it's a pretty, let's say, dull um, dagger. My equipment overall is not the greatest. Um, this thing here is level 39. It's rather old and I did not replace it. But as you can see, even with this, 
uh, sloppy gear you're able to um, progress really good so don't get bogged down with the items i would suggest um, you um, try, try to get as high as possible in the expeditions and then your gear will change anyway okay so don't um, min max out your gear right now because it's just wasted resources um, because you will exchange it anyway mm, okay so then let's have a quick gameplay demo and then that's it i would say I'll just start a 118 um, and I just walk a few meters so that you can see how this build works. So what I do since I have full of rage, I just spend the rage and spam Havoc Orb. So I build up more willpower and then while I'm walking, I press the button to get all the buffs. See, I'm fully loaded with the buffs and while I'm walking, I can press and hold uh, the button for... Um, you see the arctic spear and it does a lot of damage i'm now full of rage and then i just rinse and repeat do my havoc orb get all my buffs ready more havoc orb i can press and hold my button for the other spear and look it does lots of damage and that's the combination i just go do okay pretty easy so we havoc orb a bit get our buffs you can see i have tons of buffs and then I just walk around, press the Arctic Spear button in case there are some enemies, but there are none. Lucky them. Rinse and repeat. That's basically it, guys. Um, that's all you do. Look, and this one I kill with my uh, little Arctic Spear projectiles. I like this. So that's it for the build guide. I hope you liked it. And uh, I need to say that's not my personal invention. I had some inspiration from the web, but as usual, that's what I do. And in case you don't like it, screw yourself. <laughs> so see you guys.